Congratulations on purchasing your brand new Chrysler Cirrus or Dodge Stratus. When Chrysler Corporation began laying the groundwork for your vehicle, the task was to create not just sporty, affordable cars, but also two vehicles that would meet all of your needs for room, reliability, and fun. Your automobile has been fashioned from new standards in design, engineering, and concern for the environment. To achieve that, we virtually reinvented Chrysler Corporation. We developed our innovative platform team concept, where experts in design, engineering, and manufacturing gather with outside suppliers at the same starting line and apply team consensus in the creation of outstanding automobiles. And we built one of the world's most advanced research and development facilities. Chrysler Technology Center's very existence is dedicated to nurturing enthusiasm in the creation of your car. And we have a single-minded goal, world-class quality. It means a lot to us that you've selected a brand new vehicle built by Chrysler Corporation, and we want to make sure that you understand how the most important features work. Although some of these features may not be included in the particular vehicle you've purchased or the option level you've chosen, most of what you're about to see will provide a better understanding of your car. We encourage you to watch the entire video and ask that you return the enclosed response card so that we may better serve you in the future. Now, sit back and enjoy the program. The manual seat height adjuster allows you to move the driver's seat to the position you find most comfortable. A telescoping handle is located near the floor at the left front of the driver's seat. To adjust the seat height, simply grasp the handle by the knob on its front, pull forward, and easily move it up or down until you've found the desired position. Release the handle. The seat locks at the position you've chosen, and the control lever automatically retracts to its storage position. Never adjust the seat while your vehicle is moving. You could lose control and be injured. So only adjust the seat when parked. The functions concentrated in your new vehicle's two control stocks have been carefully designed to put important features where you can most easily access them. They're at fingertip length on either side of the steering wheel column and all can be conveniently operated. The multifunction lever or stock on the left controls turn signals, headlights, fog lights, and panel dimming. A light up or down touch activates the turn indicators, and the solid sound and precise display are designed to remind you that they are operating. To activate your headlights, rotate the knob at the end of the left stock. The headlight switch has three positions, off, park, and headlights. To operate your headlight high beams, just pull the stock toward you. Even when your headlights are not on, you can flash the high beams by pulling the stock toward the wheel and then releasing it. You'll find the instrument panel dimmer control on the inner ring of the stock. If you drive with lights on during daylight hours, you can use this feature to bring panel lights up to their full brightness. If your car is equipped with fog lights, they can be activated by turning on your low beam headlights and pulling outward on the knob at the end of the stock. You'll also see this light in the instrument cluster which tells you your fog lights are operating. And in case you forget, there's a lights on reminder. It's a chime which sounds when you open your car door. The horn is located in the center of the steering wheel. No need to take your hands from the wheel to use it. Pushing anywhere on the perimeter or pad face activates a center blow switch which causes the horn to sound. You'll find a windshield wiper and washer command switch on the control lever to the right of the steering wheel column. Turn on wipers by rotating the knob on the end of the lever. There are four positions, off, intermittent, low, and high. Intermittent has six speeds. To use the windshield washer feature, pull the stock toward you. Pulling down and releasing the right control lever starts the convenient mist wipe for a single wiping action. To keep your wipers in top operating order and avoid possible damage to the wiper assembly, remember to remove snow buildups that might prevent the blades from returning to the off position. The switch for your new car's dome light has three positions. You must leave the switch in the middle position for lights to come on when you open your car's doors.
All instruments and controls are clearly visible through the steering wheel of your new vehicle. Odometer and trip odometer information are shown in a one-line electronic display. Your odometer shows the total distance you've driven your vehicle. Your trip odometer, which you set yourself, records the distance you've traveled on individual trips. This button located just to the right of the lighted display permits easy switching of functions. Just press and release the button to change the display from odometer to trip odometer. The word trip will appear when you've moved to this mode. To reset the trip odometer, briefly press and hold the button. Press and release the trip button a second time to return to the odometer. And your trip message center also gives you an added measure of safety. If a door is still open when you begin to move your car, the word door will replace the odometer display and a chime will sound once. Close the door and the previous display reappears. Remember, each time you restart your car after a stop, the odometer reappears, even if you have been using the trip odometer when you turned off the ignition. Your trip odometer has continued to record mileage, so just press the trip button to return to it. Your new car has a 16-gallon fuel tank. The fuel filler door is conveniently situated on the driver's side of the car, just above and behind the rear wheel well. Located in the instrument cluster, there is a low fuel warning light. That light will illuminate whenever your car's fuel tank has less than two gallons of gasoline remaining. You'll quickly discover the solid comfort delivered by your car's air conditioning and heating system. You can easily balance the temperature as well as the amount and direction of air circulating throughout your new Cirrus or Stratus and this system operates with a refrigerant that is environmentally friendly. The rotating airflow control dial is located on the left side of the temperature controls. The airflow increases as you turn the dial clockwise and decreases when you rotate it back. To start air conditioning in your car, first turn on the fan, then press this button and a green light will appear to let you know the system is operating. To turn off air conditioning, just press the button again. Located next to the airflow control is the mode control dial. By turning the pointer on this dial, you can choose the airflow pattern that best suits you. Just move the pointer to the graphic you see on the face of the dial, and the system will divert air to your car's instrument panel, floor, or windows. Remember, too, whenever you select these three positions, air is also directed to rear seat passengers through vents located under the front seats. Your car has a rear window electric defroster. To start the defrost process, press once on the button located in the center of the mode control. This will also send heat to the side view mirrors. With defrost on, a light appears in the mode control button to let you know the system is operating. The defroster will turn off automatically after 10 minutes, but if you wish, you can stop it yourself by pushing the button again. The temperature control dial is located next to the mode control. To lower the temperature in your car, rotate the control to the blue area. Moving to the red section will raise the temperature. Last is the circulation control. Use this control to choose between outside air or recirculation of air inside your car. Turn the knob clockwise for outside air and counterclockwise to recirculate. Although you won't use recirculation often, it is useful for cooling your vehicle in very hot or humid weather and it will block outside odors or dust. Please remember, continuous use of the recirculate mode can make the inside stuffy and can lead to fogging. Your car's tilt steering wheel helps to make your driving position even more comfortable. To tilt the column, just press down on the lever located below the turn signal control on the left side of the steering column. You can then move the wheel up and down till you find your most comfortable position. Then raise and lock the column firmly in place. Never try to change your steering wheel's position while driving. Adjust the column only when your vehicle is stopped. And be sure the lever is back in place and the wheel locked before driving. Your 
car's adjustable front shoulder belts have been designed to accommodate people of different heights. Remember, always wear your seat belts. And make yourself comfortable. You can do that by making some simple shoulder belt adjustments. To raise or lower your shoulder belt, you use this button. It's a one-handed operation, and as you can see, very easy to accomplish. And now when you move your seat back and forth, the belt moves with you. It isn't tightening up as you move. By the way, one of your vehicle's most important safety features is the standard driver and passenger airbag system, which along with seat belts and child restraints, is a part of your total safety system. For instructions regarding the effective use of these features, please refer to the information located on the visor and in your owner's manual. If your car is equipped with power windows, the driver's window switch includes a one-touch auto-down feature that makes operation a breeze. To use it, push the auto button rearward until you feel that it's moved past the detent position. Then release it. The window will open all the way. You're also able to open the driver's window without using the auto down feature. Just pull the auto button rearward, but not all the way back, until the window starts moving. Your new car's electronic speed control is programmed to take over accelerator operation at speeds above 30 miles per hour. The word cruise appears in the instrument cluster after you've pressed the on-off button. The system is now ready for use. When you've reached your desired speed and press the set coast button, the electronic speed control system engages and will maintain the speed you've chosen until you are ready to return to manual control. To return to manual control, just press the cancel button or lightly tap the brake pedal with your foot. If you wish to resume the speed you set earlier, simply press and release the Resume Excel button. You can also turn off the speed control using the On-Off button, but if you choose to do that, you will erase the speed you've set from the system's memory. Your new car is equipped with one of three fine sound systems. An AM-FM stereo radio with cassette tape player, a premium AM-FM stereo radio with CD player, or a premium AM-FM stereo radio with a cassette player, which is CD ready. For these sound systems, the many features and operating instructions are detailed in the owner's manual, such as the clock setting procedure and two station preset per button. The premium cassette radio has built-in controls for an optional dealer-installed CD changer. If the CD changer has not been installed, CD operations printed on the radio space plate should be ignored. The optional anti-lock braking system, or ABS, is designed to provide you with greater control of your vehicle in even the most unfavorable braking circumstances. ABS prevents wheel lockup and provides the driver with dependable braking performance. By preventing wheel lockup, ABS helps the driver maintain traction, which improves steering control and directional stability. ABS works differently than conventional brakes by automatically pumping the brakes for you during severe braking conditions. So their performance takes a little bit of getting used to. But always remember that ABS works best when you let it do its job. Just press firmly on the brake pedal and let ABS do the pumping. You should never pump the pedal yourself because manual pumping makes ABS less effective. When ABS has been activated, it's normal to feel the brake pedal pulsate and to hear some associated system noise. So don't be alarmed. Just press the brake down firmly and let ABS do the work. If at any time the yellow ABS light remains lit, the system is warning you that it may not be functioning properly. You should take your vehicle to your authorized dealer immediately to have the problem serviced. Even without ABS, your standard braking system will continue to function properly. You'll find there are two convenient ways to open the trunk of your new car. One way is to use the key. 
In addition, there's a remote trunk lid release inside the car. It's within easy reach of your left hand and is located next to the driver's seat. For additional storage room, the rear seat back can be folded forward. You'll find a folding seat latch in your car's trunk and another on the rear speaker shelf. To release the seat back from the trunk, pull the strap you'll find under the rear shelf. Then use any long item you might be loading to push the rear seat forward. Inside the car, pressing the release button on the rear shelf also releases the seat back. This button must be locked with the plastic coated master key to secure the trunk. Very convenient. In addition, for more complete trunk security, you must utilize the trunk locking system. An override lever is built into the trunk. Before you close the trunk, push down on this override lever and that will deactivate the inside remote trunk release. Just move the lockout lever up to restore the remote latch feature. In addition to your regular ignition key, you'll find a valet key. When someone else parks your car, you can protect valuables in the trunk by using the trunk lockout lever and then giving the valet key to that person. The valet key will operate only the car doors and the ignition. Only your plastic coated master key will open the trunk. The available keyless entry system offers personal security along with the obvious convenience of the system. Pressing either of the two buttons on the keyless entry transmitter allows you to lock or unlock your car doors and turn on interior lights from as far away as 23 feet. Pressing the unlock function on your transmitter once allows you to unlock just the driver's door. Pressing it a second time unlocks all the doors. And in an emergency situation, keyless entry can become a very important personal security system which gives you even more options. When the lock and unlock buttons are depressed simultaneously, your keyless entry system becomes a panic alarm. Your car's headlights will flash, the horn will sound, the driver's door only will unlock and interior lights will be illuminated. To shut off the alarm, simply press the door unlock button. You can drive your car with the alarm still on and when you reach a speed of 15 miles per hour the alarms will end. Or after three minutes if you haven't taken any other action the alarm will simply shut itself off. Your car may be equipped with a vehicle theft alarm system which monitors the doors, ignition and trunk key cylinder for unauthorized operation. If something or someone triggers the alarm, the horn will sound, interior and headlights will flash, and the engine will be immobilized for a preset time or until you disarm the system. Here's how you set your vehicle's alarm. Remove the keys from the ignition. Using the power door lock switch, your key, or the keyless entry transmitter, close and lock all doors. The system will be armed after 16 seconds have passed. You will then see the security light in the cluster flashing slowly. That tells you the system has now been activated. If after 16 seconds the security light has not begun to flash, check your owner's manual for guidance. To disarm the system, simply unlock the front door. If the horn sounds three times, you'll know the alarm has been set off and you should check your vehicle for tampering. The battery is stored in a compartment in front of the left front wheel. That location keeps your battery away from the engine heat for improved battery life. It also means better protection from the possibility of theft. You'll find remote positive and negative battery connections in the engine compartment. As you can see, they are clearly marked and easy to reach. Your owner's manual has more information on battery service and emergency starting. Each vehicle comes with a standard rear door child protection lock system to provide a safer environment for small children. This safety feature prevents rear seat occupants from opening the doors from the inside. When safety locks are engaged, doors will open only from the outside. To engage the safety locks, simply open the rear doors and push this lever down. To disengage the lock and to permit the doors to open from the inside, just lift the lever.
Everyone in your vehicle needs to be buckled up at all times, and that certainly includes children. The available integrated child safety seat you may have purchased with your vehicle provides safety for children and offers convenience for you. This model year, integrated child safety seats are found in several Chrysler Corporation vehicles. Although yours may differ slightly from the one shown here, its design and operation are similar. To use the integrated child safety seat, first gently take hold of the top center of the rear seat cushion, and then lower the seat cushion. Before placing the child in the seat, add slack to the shoulder belts. Pull the black seat belt release strap firmly. At the same time, pull both shoulder belts through the slots in the seat back. Separate the halves of the shoulder belt clip and determine the correct shoulder belt slot height. Select the nearest slots at or above the child's shoulders. To adjust the slot height position, peel back the lower edge of the head pad and move the belt into the middle position. Then redirect the belt into the upper or lower position, being careful not to twist the belt. If the child's shoulders are above the upper shoulder belt position, the child should use the adult seat belts instead of this child seat. Finally, place the child into the seat and put a shoulder belt over each shoulder. Insert both seat belt latch plates into the buckle and pull up on them to make sure that they're firmly latched. Fasten the two halves of the shoulder belt clip together and place it two or three inches below the child's chin. Then pull the gray tabbed belt firmly until the shoulder belts are tight against the child's shoulders. You shouldn't be able to fit more than two fingers between the shoulder belts and the child's chest. To release the restraint system, separate the halves of the shoulder belt clip. Then push the red release button in the buckle. Push the shoulder belts to the side and remove the child from the seat. For more detailed information, please refer to the owner's manual supplement for the Chrysler Integrated Child Seat. Now that you've learned more about the outstanding features of your new car, you're probably anxious to take it out for a spin. Just one more thing before you leave. And closed with this video is a response card containing five questions. Please take a few minutes to fill it out so that we can continue to serve you with the same level of excellence down the road. Once again, congratulations on owning your brand new Chrysler Cirrus or Dodge Stratus. And remember, be sure to always buckle up.